All right, guys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a how-to video that's been super requested. So if you don't follow me on TikTok, or if this is for TikTok, this video has gone viral now like one and a half times. It's got like three million views of the DIY PVC collapsible jaw jacker. Now, the first time I made this was about three years ago, and it cost me like $6 in PVC. Now, with inflation, my total of PVC was $14.63. So let me show you how it goes together and then we're gonna build one right now from scratch. I don't really need another one, but you guys requested one. So, I'll uh, show you how it goes together. It kind of all nests together like this. So we have an end cap and then we have two pieces of PVC, one large size and one smaller size, and I'll go through the actual things right now. So I'll show you how to put it together and then I'll show you what to buy and what tools you need to put to make one of these. So first things first is we want to get that piece in, that's the T. And I designed this for a 28 inch medium rod that I use for my other jaw jackers and snappers basically. So there that goes like that and I'm going to try not to hook myself. I'm going to let a little line out. And you can design it for longer rods. This is what I found works great for a, a 28 inch rod. That goes through the eyelet like that. And then when a fish bites, he pulls the trigger and the rod goes up and he hooks himself. So let's uh, set some stuff aside here and let's build one. I'll go over all the materials first and then I'll show you guys how to make these, uh, these holes. And yes, there is some easier ways to build these, but I have not found a way to make it packable without taking it all apart and having like five or six different pieces. First things first, we're gonna go over the supplies that we need, and this is my Lowe's receipt right here. So this is $1.29, this is an inch and a quarter end cap, which you kinda need, it just keeps everything basically from falling out. You need one of those, those that was $1.29, and then you need a two foot piece of inch and a quarter, schedule 40, and you can find this near the PVC section, it's usually like on an end cap, there's like little short sections of these to do like under sink plumbing and like project work. You need one of those, and then you need a inch long, inch diameter, which basically is measuring the inside, so that's the way PVC works. It's not the outside, it's the inside diameter. Correct, it's the inside diameter that they're going by. So inch by two foot long PVC schedule 40 pipe. So all you need is those two. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna measure my little stem here to five inches, and we're gonna cut that with a hacksaw. So let's set some stuff down here and get it out of the way. And to make the trigger mechanism, which is the most common thing I get asked, I use just metal coat hangers. Um, I actually had to borrow some from my parents because I got rid of all mine because they like dent your clothes and that kind of stuff. They are hard to cut through, so I'll show you guys how to cut through that. That's the trigger and a piece of small copper wire or string will work as well. So we want to make that five inches long. Get rid of the receipt here, and we're just going to start cutting. And I'm using a hacksaw with basically a metal blade. You can also use a piece of string to cut a piece of PVC, or any sort of blade that you can get to cut through, uh, through PVC. So let me cut that. I won't make you watch the whole thing. So it's not pretty, but it works. Take all those little, little burrs off. If you have a, uh, a razor blade or something like that, you can take all those extra pieces off. And then I also made a little notch in here, if you guys can see that. And that, that is for the rod seat. If it goes all the way down, my rod is a little too, too thick for that, so you don't really need that. But it will allow the rod to go down a little bit more. So that is, works the same way, is cut a little piece back here. And hacksaws are fairly cheap. They're, you know, easy to buy. Some of them come with blades. And then you're going to want to stand it up on edge here um, and cut through that. So kind of like, kind of like that. Hopefully you can zoom in on that and see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in the vise over there real quick um, to not get hurt, basically. So there's the finished product. And you can take... Uh, you can cut that down more if you'd like and kind of figure out what works best for your rod. I'm using the uh, 
uh, GX2 Ugly Stick 28 inch medium. That's my go-to for like lake trout and brookies and stuff like that for ice fishing. And if you didn't know what this was already, this is a ice fishing hook setting device like the jaw jacker or the snapper or the automatic fisherman. Those are like the generic brand names. So let's get uh, the old one out of the way. And the next thing we're gonna do is kind of the hard part is we don't need to do anything to this other piece now. This piece is just basically our, our T that prevents the jaw jacker or the, the hook setting device from going through the ice. We're gonna drill some holes in the bigger piece of PVC. So our goal is to have this fit through the end of that. So we're gonna turn that into that basically. And that is not the easiest thing to do unless you have a specific size hole saw. If you have a hole saw that's inch and a quarter, which is kind of like not a standard size because most of them have to go through the PVC pipe, um, go right ahead and take that and put it in your drill. Be careful, drill through it. What I did, because I was living in an apartment at the time and didn't have a lot of uh, tools with me, was I took a drill with a probably eighth inch, eighth inch drill bit and I basically just drilled tiny little holes around and then I took cutters or a screwdriver and I basically made a bunch of holes and then punched that piece out. So I'm gonna put on some safety glasses and this is gonna take me a while but this is the, the hardest part. And one of the things you can do to make those hole drilling easier is to stand the piece that you're inserting through, the one inch piece, up on edge and then kind of mark around it the best you can. It's at a kind of a different angle, so you're gonna to have to aim big around that and basically just drill a ton of holes. So I'm gonna start drilling. So as you're drilling it, it's going to look kind of like that with a bunch of little tiny holes. GoPro can see that too. Bunch of little tiny holes and then you wanna basically take um, a screwdriver or something to get rid of the stuff in between and get all of that out of there. And we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for the other side. You can also take your drill and you can run it in each hole so it actually kinda of acts like a router. Now you can use, it, use a hole saw like I said before or if you have a Dremel tool, you can kinda of like grind it away with like a cutting blade or like a router blade. It is all kinda of all dangerous at the same time so be careful. And it does make a mess. So that's kind of the hole you want to get roughly. And then you want to kind of see if your pipe fits in there. And if it doesn't, you're going to want to make that hole just slightly bigger because you want it to be a tight fit so it doesn't like easily slide in and out. And then you're going to want to do the same thing for the other side. All right, so we finally got one side done and I'm covered in this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back out. It's like a basically a tight fit. I'm going to take that same drill and I'm going to find the center point and make sure I keep that piece straight up and down and I'm going to mark the center point on the other side by drilling through it. And that's going to be my center point. Now the rest of the holes you can do the same way with the drill. I'm going to use the Dremel because this took forever. But we're going to do the same marking process on the other side. And then this all I'm gonna use is an abrasive cutoff wheel. Um, if you don't have one of these, like I said, just go back to the drill. Um, I haven't really found another way to do this besides power tools. It would take, take way too long. And like I said, we want that to be a tight fit. And obviously we want it to be, uh, doesn't need to really need to be straight, but mine didn't come out straight, but that's okay. I can fix that just a little bit. Once we get that inserted, now it's a lot more, more stable to work on, per se. We're gonna drill a, probably a little bit bigger than an eighth inch hole on the end here, right towards the tip here. And that's where our trigger mechanism is gonna go. Really easy to do. Now what took me the longest to figure out was the shape of this hole in the back here. So what I'm gonna do is show you the shape of the hole that I'm, I'm making. That hole in the back there, it doesn't need that, that big back part, but what happens is 
the piece that you're putting in there needs to lean at like a decent 45 degree angle. So what you want to do is start with it kind of like upright and then kind of grind your way down to where it's at 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do, and I made this so the the I made this so the end cap kind of like slides on and then the thing starts right behind that. So we are going to measure for you guys. Basically, we're going to start the front of the hole three and a half inches and work our way back, basically. We're going to take that shape, move it up three and a half inches, basically in line with this thing as it's level to the ice. And we're going to trace it. And like I said, that's the shape. It's kind of like a, a leaf kind of shape. Get that out of the way, and then we're going to go back at it with the... Uh, with the Dremel tool. And there you have your 45 degrees. This one I made a little bit loose, so just a, a disclaimer, start the hole small so everything fits in there nice and tight and then work your way, ease into it basically. Start a little bit less zealous than I did. So I made that a little bit too big. Like I said, start small, which you can do to fix that is like, like some JV weld or something like that to kind of like build that area back up. So, but like I said, make sure your hole's a little bit smaller and you want to kind of have that at 45 degrees. So start like kind of vertical and then end your way down uh, by grinding out the top here. And like I said, you can use your drill with the, basically drill a bunch of holes like you do with like carving a pumpkin, make a little tiny holes and then go through it. Let's go on to the most common question is making the trigger mechanism. I'm going to use a piece of coat hanger material, which is fairly stiff. And I'm going to cut it right at the bottom bend here and use kind of this whole piece to start with. And I'm going to use that same hacksaw because coat hanger material is surprisingly pretty stiff. And then we want to bend that piece out and we're going to use basically that whole that whole section right there, that bottom piece, and we're going to cut that as well. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the T section here, and we're going to take um, we're going to take some uh, some needle nose pliers, and we're going to make sure there's no burrs on the end of that coat hanger because that's the part that sticks into your rod, and you don't want to break in your eyelet. So we're going to take probably a half inch chunk there and we're just going to bend that at 90 degrees just like that. That part is going to be being bent back and forth depending on what type of fish we're going to be fishing with or for basically. And then our next piece is going to be three inches long at another 90 degrees. So I'm just going to measure it off my piece, but it is three inches long. And if you have shorter rods, you can basically bend these back and kind of adjust it the way that you feel is going to be best for your rod. So there we go. There's the piece that sticks into your rod and the piece that comes back. So we're, we're at that stage now. And I'm not going to actually make it down from where it was before. I'm going to make it flush. So right as it comes back flush, we're going to grab it just like this. And we're going to bend it out. Now we're at that stage basically. And then what you want to do is if you want the trigger to be super sensitive, make this as long as you want. So if you're fishing for like light biting fish, or you're using really small baits, or even like uh, just plastics, they'll hit it, but unlike live bait where they hit it and slam it and try to go with it, and they try to like run away with it, like dead stick bait, like just a little crappy jig or something like that, or eggs, they'll try to hit it and they'll just stay there. Make your system longer because that's going to act as more of a leverage to trip the trigger. So I make the length that I use right now is probably another three inches three and a half inches. We're going to hold it again and we're going to bend it straight up like that. 
Then we're going to take it and we're going to bend it over like that. This is probably really hard to see on camera here, but I'm trying my best. And we're going to put a little notch in there. And that's where our line's going to sit. So we're, we're basically making that same piece. So we have a little extra piece, which I'm going to go over to the vise right now and cut that off. Because it's hard to, hard to show it on camera. We're basically going to cut that extra piece off. So we made our trigger mechanism. And I'll kind of show that slowly against my hand. And I'll give you guys the dimensions again for the 28 inch rod. So we have a half inch sticking into the rod, uh, three and a half inch, three and a half inch, basically kind of like four inches out to make that trigger a little more sensitive. And then we have another three inches of metal hanging out. But basically, if you want to make your trigger sensitive, make that longer. So the other thing that I didn't show in the materials list is just a piece of copper wire. And string does work, but it doesn't like it, it spins in the wind sometimes. So I like a piece of copper wire. House wire is fine. You could also use a piece of coat hanger, I guess. And that's the way that it was originally designed. What you can do is you can thread the trigger mechanism through your hole like that, but that leaves, you, leaves you with no adjustment. So that leaves you with no or very little adjustment. So basically the rod has to sit in there kind of perfectly. And let's see if even with my mistake on the back side there, I was rushing for you guys. If the rod sits in there. I'm gonna pull some line out without hooking myself. And it can take some fine tuning to get dialed in, but once it's kind of dialed in, it's good. So I bent the uh, trigger arm just back a little bit. If you guys can see that, I'll kind of zoom in there with the camera. Bend that back a little bit. That actually makes it stay a little bit better. And then when a fish bites, I'm actually going to hold it onto the hook so I don't get jabbed. Because when a fish bites, that trigger will go off and set the hook in the fish. Is so if you want it adjustable and you want to make it like lighter and tighter, what you could do is add some wire down here to make this part longer. And what I do, so what I do to keep the trigger from falling into the hole on the ice is just a piece of basically blue painter's tape or electrical tape, whatever you have at the time, and that just keeps it from falling out. Like I said, this is. The, the brand name version of this is either $35 or all the way up to like I've seen $65 because of supply and demand with ice fishing and stuff like that and supply shortages around the world. But right now we're at 14, where are we at? Right now price wise, we're at $14.63 plus the tools, which don't really count because I already had those, and plus the coat hanger, which you probably have in your closet. And then, bang, hooks the fish. And then put it away, you take your rod out. Take your rod out of your holder. You put the short piece in there. Take your long T piece. Stick it in the end like that. Obviously you would clean all of this. You can make that a little bit shorter. Put your end cap on and then you have, basically you can have as many of you want of these sitting in a five gallon bucket, it doesn't really take up that much space, uh, except for the trigger. If I could find a way to make the trigger a little bit smaller, I can make it like the snapper version where it's a, a straight piece like that and it actually holds the part down. You could probably fold it into the tube and you would save a little bit of space, but having those sitting on top and you're saving between $20 and, you know, $40 depending on which model you buy. So hopefully that's as much detail as you guys can get to make one of these things. So I don't use them very often. I don't usually, I fish on two line lakes that only allow, I usually just have two jigging rods with me. So I don't use a lot of live bait. So that's why I don't, you guys don't see them in my videos very often. But 
Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you guys leave comments and questions below.